Hi everybody, Richard Tromans here again at Artificial Lawyer TV. Today we're doing another product walkthrough. This time it's Zuva, a product that you have seen before, but it has now been updated considerably. Uh, to tell us more about it is Noah Weisberg. Hey Noah. Hey Richard, good to see you. Good to see you again. Good to have you back on the show. Um, I'm going to disappear and let you take it away because I think you've done this before and you know how it works. So uh, please take it away. Yeah, as, as I mentioned, my actual preference would be to get you to do the demo and for me to disappear. But I think for this, I will, uh, I'll do the work. Uh, but that brings us to a core differentiator of Zuva Analyze, which is it's super easy to sign up for and try yourself. So you can literally just go and create the account for free on our webpage and you'll get to here and it's super easy. So if you just go click sign up for free, you can get going and create an account and get the same thing that I was going to try to make you do, but instead I will show. So let me show it to you. Uh, the idea with Zuva Analyze. So as you remember, just backstory on Zuva, once upon a time, I co-founded Cura Systems. We grew Cura Systems into the main contract analysis tools serving law firms, other professional services firms, as well as a whole bunch of corporates. Um, we sold it in 2021 to Latera. Latera, I think, continues to progress the technology and get people signing up. And I think it does really well in the law firm space. Uh, as part of that sale, we got to keep a copy of the underlying Cura technology, which I think a lot of people felt was pretty accurate at finding stuff in contracts. Um, with Zuva, we initially sold the technology as an API only version. So you could build it into your own workflows and applications. We have a number of CLMs and other legal tech companies who've taken our API and built it into their products. We also have companies who built it in using Power Automate uh, to processes that they've built. But we always kind of missed having a user interface. And we realized that we may be some of the most experienced people in the world at building contract review user interfaces. And what we realized as uh, large language models came to the fore is there's a whole bunch of stuff that we couldn't do back in the day that we can do now and going forward that we think is really cool. And we thought a user interface was kind of the best way to express that stuff. And so we built one and that's what I'm going to show you right now. So this is the Zuva Analyze product which is brand new, we kind of soft launched it back in the spring, got people using it. And uh, September 12th is the kind of official sort of uh, launch ribbon cutting sort of thing. But actually uh, this product has been out there and been getting used for a while. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now, I'm just in a Zoom Analyze. If I went and I signed up for an account, I would end up in a Zoom Analyze sort of workspace and I could create folders, I could add documents, whatever. So let's add a new folder and it's a rainy day here and probably, uh, probably is by YouTube given that you're in England. Um, so I'm gonna create project rainy day and I'll add some documents to it. I can add a couple documents. I can add a couple hundred or thousand documents if I feel like it. So let's add some more documents. Um, Sorry, desktop, and let's do maybe, should I upload a zip? Let's upload it. So upload a zip, that zip could have like tons of contracts in it. And I can push those into the software. And what it's gonna do, first of all, is start to just analyze those documents immediately. So one of the things it'll do is it'll start to tell us what type of agreement it is, and then I can ask it to find more. One of the, problems with our technology is we find so much stuff that what we decided to do with Zuva was just really simplify uh, the choices that people had to make. So Zuva finds, say, 1,300 different data plus data points in contracts out of the box. But what we decided to do was instead of make people go through the whole list of things that we find, we thought it'd be easier if we kind of pre-selected groups of things that people could find. So here I just ran an m and due diligence set of uh, models on these documents. But if I felt like it, I could run something more focused on employment contracts or credit agreement review or lease review or vendor contract review or sales and rev ops review or privacy review. 
um, if I felt like it, or I could select the individual models, I could build new models, but we, we've just really tried to simplify the user interface and make it really easy. Um, anyways, I applied a set of uh, models to these contracts and what the software is going to do is go through and pull stuff out of it. So let's look at one of the contracts that I added here. Uh, this is just like a simple SAS terms and conditions. Um, and you'll see that on the right-hand side, you have the original agreement. Even if that original agreement was a scan, the system will have gone through, it'll have OCR'd it, and it'll put in what the system finds. And it you can see here, it's found two different titles, right? And there's a good reason why it found two different titles. Like each one of these could be the correct title. Um, but say I feel like getting rid of one, I can easily sort of make edits like this and it'll go through and find stuff. And that's all kind of the same as what we would have done back in the day. But one of the really cool things that we can do now is not only can we find the clauses, but we can actually also interpret them. So what we're doing here is our underlying technology, which is people think is highly reliable and sort of most of the world's big law firms and professional services firms use this same underlying technology to find clauses and contracts. What we now do is we use that same technology to find the relevant parts of the contract. And then we shoot that into an LLM and we give the LLM very structured answer choices. So we don't say, hey, can the agreement be terminated for convenience? Answer how you'd like. We say, give us one or more of these results, right? So what the real power of that is, is first of all, you definitely avoid hallucinations and kind of get more reliable results, but more powerfully, you get structured results. Like the results at LLMs by their natures, uh, nature are generative. Like they like to say things, they'll say even the same thing different ways if you ask them the same question multiple times. And by giving them answer choices, you force them to answer the same way. And that's really powerful because having data in the same format means you can do really interesting things like sort it in a table or trigger an action. So for example, if you were to see, if we go down to can the agreement be assigned, we can see that assignment requires notice. We could trigger a flow to generate a notice, right? Like we could actually go and go to the notice section and figure out in the notice section whether electronic notice can be given or whether it has to be paper notice. And we could pull out the notice address and we could send a form letter saying like, dear counterparty, <laughs> you know, we have to give you notice if we're gonna assign this contract, we're signing this contract, have a good day. Please reach out if you have any questions. And so I think that that being able to get answers out is just one pretty cool thing we're able to do right now. Um, so that's like the core of Zuba Analyze. It cranks through the agreements pretty quick. I think you'll notice um, if you go into them, it's sort of done these summaries quite quickly and it can do a lot of summaries very quickly uh, and in a way that is reliable as well and gives you granular information. Um, so there's a lot more I could show you with Zuba Analyze, but I think the core things to take away from it are it's got kind of the advantages of uh, sort of the highly reliable machine learning tech coupled with generative AI to sort of give you more granular results, but to do it all with speed, reliability at a kind of more industrial scale, uh, number one. Number two, you can actually sign up online for it. You don't have to talk to sales. You can literally go and create an account and be in there in minutes trying it yourself, uh, which is pretty cool. You also don't have to sign up to a contract with us. Like we love subscription agreements just like everybody else, but unlike um, a lot of uh, companies, we enable you to just pay as you go if you feel like it. Pay as you go rate is higher than it would be if you signed up for a subscription, but it can be pretty powerful if you just have a project to not have to sign up for something on a recurring basis. Um, I'll also say my anecdotal sense is that Zuvanalyze is pretty snappy relative to the user interface, just goes pretty nicely relative to my sense of what's market in contract analysis tools. Uh, but that's something you'd have to, I'm sure everybody says that their system's great. And that's something you'd have to try for yourself to know. Um, and a final thing is, is over time, I, we're going to keep enhancing this and just 
what we're trying to do is drive people much more end to end through contract review processes than we were able to do before uh, with the technology that existed a few years ago. And we think with today's technology, which is not something we have the only access to, but we have some great people to harness it, um, we'll be able to help people even further with reviews than we could have three years ago, five years ago, whatever. Fantastic. Thanks, Noah. Interesting. I've got a whole bunch of questions. Uh, question one, uh, what kind of LLMs are you using and how are you using them? Are you just doing a call to one or using a bunch of them? So our, we found for what we were trying to do, which is basically generate these uh, primarily right now, we're also got some search stuff going on, but primarily select between these question answering groups that we were getting pretty good accuracy out of the open AI uh, GPT models, depending on the one we might switch up a bit, which model we're using. But, um, but we found we were getting good enough accuracy there that it wasn't really meaningful for us. Uh, so by good enough, I mean, it was getting that question right in our testing about 85% of the time, you know, maybe 83 here, but maybe a bit above some other place. and. We felt like that accuracy was kind of about as high as we could reasonably expect. And if we switched over to Claude or something like that, it wouldn't drive a material change in accuracy. So we've stuck with the OpenAI one. The other thing to note is that because of the way we've architected this, so because it's not reviewing, the LLM is not reviewing the whole document, but is just reviewing segments of the document, it means that the number of tokens that are getting submitted to the LLM are pretty limited. So even if you're running like 10,000 or 100,000 contracts, we can do that economically. And so that means that the price differences between the different models aren't that big of a factor. Uh, so one of the one of the pluses with our tech is you just kind of, as opposed to uh, where if you're just using a straight LLM, you kind of have to figure out ways to make abstractions to handle very large numbers of documents or spend a lot of time and money reviewing all the documents with the pure LLM. Uh, because we have this pretty accurate underlying technology, we're able to leverage that to generate more efficient results, which means we don't need to worry as much about the costliness of the different LLMs. Um, that said, we have an actual research team at Zuva uh, that sort of came to us as part of the Cure transaction. Uh, so we got most of the machine learning research people uh, who were there and uh, when we did the deal. And we continue to do work at testing out lots of different things with different commercially available LLMs as well as open source LLMs and just seeing if we can get some edge and get things to work even better. But for now, we found the open LLMs are good enough for this specific LLM based feature. Um, however, we got other LLM based stuff and we'll do it differently depending on what we think is best for that purpose. Gotcha. I, I was going to ask you about that, about tokens and volume. I suppose another aspect of this is chunking because you, you effectively you're, you're pre-chunking anyway. So you, you don't have to break this up anyway. You will, and the nice thing is, so if you were trying to review uh, for example, I was at ILTA uh, a few weeks ago with you, and I saw uh, a person I know there, uh, and they were saying they can only get Copilot to review the first 50 pages of the document. Like if something's in the first 50 pages, it does okay, but that's it, right? And I'm sure that's a limitation that'll pass. And like you know, the LLMs, like people are putting a lot of effort into making them more able to handle scale. But right now, if you're reviewing longer documents or if you're reviewing a lot of documents, you or the vendor you're using is probably coming up with some abstraction to figure out uh, a way to sort of efficiently and cost effectively get through those documents. And we don't have to do that. Like we have an abstraction too, but our abstraction is something that everybody already thought was probably something like the gold standard for contract analysis accuracy gotcha yeah yeah you you, you pre-built it in um, and in terms of the user base i mean who who is using zuva now and who is the analyze capability aimed at is it the same group or is this um, no not that? well sometimes yes sometimes no okay uh zuva customers now tend or zuva customers pre this i shouldn't actually say now because things have changed a bit since we've had the 
soft launch of Analyze back in the spring. But um, but the Zuba user base uh, for the first kind of couple of years of Zuba was primarily uh, other tech companies, right? So someone like uh, LawView or uh, Dogma Crunch or someone like that. I've got a large CLM and uh, some places like that who would use us to build contracts, AI features into their technology, right? So instead of building the contracts AI themselves, or maybe they'd build some contracts AI themselves, uh, but they'd also incorporate ours to do the things that it's good at, which one of the things it's really good at is finding parts of agreements. Okay, so people would use us for that. Um, that was most of the Zuba user base. We also had some corporates who used us directly. So for example, Microsoft had built us into a workflow at Microsoft where they, um, they needed to review contracts to see if they had one specific provision in them. If they had that specific provision in them, then those contracts needed to go for further legal review. If they didn't have that specific provision, then uh, they would actually send people who added contracts to this system, this ticketing system, an immediate, like, you're good to go email. So Microsoft had built that in. IBM had built something in, uh, built us into a royalty management system. So we had some corporates who were using us as well and are using us uh, to do that kind of stuff. But now the Zuba user base has shifted a bit. And so we still have that stuff. Um, but we're also with the user interface based product, picking up people who need to do contract review projects. So that might be uh, company. Uh, definitely we've seen and a, a lot of folks on our side on in-house departments who are trying to do their own M&A deals. Uh, we've seen ALSP, we've seen, uh, you know, just companies trying to find stuff. We also have uh, quite a lot of real estate usage, uh, which is nice. Uh, one group you don't hear me talking about is law firms. firms. Yeah. So uh, we love law firms. Like we, you know, I think tried to be a good vendor to them for a whole bunch of years as part of the Kira sale. Um, we're very, very reasonably not allowed to sell uh, the UI based tech. We actually are allowed to sell the API to law firms and we, we've got law firm usage of the API, but for the user interface, we're, we got to work with Latera around that. And Latera very reasonably has kind of restricted our ability to sell this tech to law firms. Uh, that's a time limited thing. So that's, uh, that's got about two more years to run. Um, and then we would be allowed to sell law firms, but I don't even know, like our hope is, uh, we think the law firm market's a great market. Uh, it also seems, you know, well-served, like they're good companies in that market. And I think it's, uh, you know, we're not allowed to sell to that market and it's not a, it, the UI based tool is that market. And it's not a market that we're, we're trying to sell to right now. <laughs> like we take, uh, the deal that we made with Latera, uh, seriously and aren't, aren't trying to sell to those people. Um, gotcha. in other spots where Latera feels like collaborating with us there or something. Yeah, no, no, totally. It makes sense. Makes sense. Well, at this point, I would normally ask how much it costs and how to get it, but you already explained that. Yeah. So, which, like, which one of the really <laughs> cool things about us, you know, I think you and I have spoken about this before, but we've looked at legal tech. Mm. Uh, very few pieces of legal tech actually put their pricing on their websites, and uh, very few of them will, uh, almost none of them will allow you to pay as you go, which has always seemed kind of outrageous to me, especially around contracts review, where so much contract review is project-based. And if you're talking about a law firm or an ALSP, maybe maybe they have recurring projects to do for different clients. But if you're talking about a company, a lot of the time they just have a problem. Like there's a regulatory change or there's an M&A deal or they just did an M&A deal and they have to do an integration or they're doing a CLM migration and it's like a one-off project. And Probably, you know, realistically, they do have other projects year after year, but we continually saw friction uh, over the years with people who felt like doing pay as you go and couldn't. And so I think one thing we're able to offer with Zuba is just pay as you go pricing. Uh, the pay as you go pricing is more expensive than uh, subscription based pricing, as you'd expect, just in the same way that I don't know, for I don't know, the Costco is as big a thing if you're. <laughs> in the UK, but 
Like if I go to the local corner store, I should expect to pay more for a Pepsi than if I buy a 36 pack at Costco or if I subscribe and save on Amazon. Uh, there are sort of benefits to doing it that way, but I think actually pay as you go can be very affordable too because you don't pay for more than you'd like. Um, anyways, we're happy to sell to people the way they'd like to buy. Um, that extends to one other thing too, which is um, it, as opposed to hiding information from people, we really tried to, to make it very clear what our software does on our website, right? So there's like, we don't hide the number of fields. You can kind of look through, find out what we have. You can see the number of, of document classifications that the software does automatically. You can find out tons about our documentation. You can literally sign up for free and try the software. Like we are happy to talk to you. We're happy to connect you with the salesperson, but we really think that it's a better, more respectful buying process for buyers if they can figure out this information by themselves without having to talk to us. We're happy to give you the answer, but but I think that's one way that Zuga is fairly different than a lot of things out on the market. Like we're really trying to sell people something that they know uh, what they're getting. Gotcha. Fantastic. Well, we got to leave it there, but very yeah. interesting. And, and congratulations on taking uh, the company further. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> keep, keep on working. Thanks very much. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if we can get it as far as we did, Kira. Hopefully uh, that and beyond. Thank you.